two months ago, $9.4 million were stolen from Polter Finance. And in this video, we will have a complete case study. We will break down the attack step by step, how the attacker was able to steal this amount of money from this lending protocol and got away with almost $10 million. And if you're new here, my name is Johnny. I create educational content about smart contract security and DeFi. If you like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification button. Now, without further ado, let's get started. So if you go to Polter Finance right now on the Fountain Network, this is how it looks like. The protocol is completely broken. Polter functionalities on Phantom have been suspended indefinitely following the exploit. Users can only perform Polter token functions, bridge and claim Polter rewards. Please see Discord, yada, yada, yada. And Polter is a lending protocol on the Phantom network. It was exploited on the 16th of November, approximately two months ago, and $9.4 million were stolen. Zero funds were recovered. People lost their money. The attack technique that the attacker used was spot price oracle manipulation, which we are going to break down in this video and see exactly how he exploited the protocol and got away with $9.4 million. But before, let's see what we're going to have today. We will have an intro about the attack and about the protocol. We will see the attack timeline step by step, how it happened. We'll have some technical details about the vulnerability that was exploited and about the exploit that took place. Eventually, we'll talk about the team response and what happened after. So what is Polter Finance? Polter is a lending and borrowing protocol, essentially a fork of Aave with some changes. And the focus in Polter is on the spooky swap or the boot token market. It lives on the Phantom token on the phantom chain and it has millions of dollars deposited in TVL where users deposited funds to get some yield and also borrowed in exchange of their collateral. Now let's see the attack timeline and we will watch behind the scenes how the attacker operated. So on the 16th of November 6 p.m. the attacker received some ETH from Tornado Cash. Tornado Cash is a mixing service that allows you to receive ETH from a source that is not recognizable and it allows you essentially to hide yourself and to operate from the shadows and this wallet that initiated the attack was funded with approximately one ETH from Tornado Cash. We can see right away that uh, the attacker used this LeFi bridge or layer zero whatever bridge so called to bridge this ETH that he got from Tornado Cash from the Ethereum network from Ethereum to Arbitrum and eventually to Phantom. So he used this bridge and then he swapped this uh, ETH to Phantom so he can use it to pay for transaction fees on the Phantom network. The next step would be to deploy the malicious contract, the attacker deployed the malicious contract, then it triggered it and this is the result of the exploit transaction. And as you can see over here, the attacker supplied 601 boot tokens, which is equivalent to around $700, but on the other side, he took from the contract way, way, way more money. He took $6.8 million in form of RAP Phantom tokens, $1.7 million of S Phantom X, 57K of USDCE, 26K of AXLUSD, 9K of Meme, 96K of Sol, 35K of ETH, 21K of RAP BTC, only for $700 worth of BOO. Now you might ask, how come the attacker was able to deposit such a small amount of money in BOO tokens and take from the contract so much money? And the answer is because he exploited a vulnerability, an Oracle manipulation exploit that could be exploited in the lending protocol smart contract. And this is another screenshot from the Ether scan. This is the exact transaction that the attacker sent to exploit the protocol. Uh, you can see here that the from address is the EOA account that is in control of the attacker. And this is his malicious smart contract that he deployed and he sent 601 tokens this contract and received all this amount of tokens which you can scroll and get more just the same thing just from ether scan or phantom scan in our case 
Now, the attacker possess control over all these assets and the next thing he does, he just swaps all these assets back, back to Phantom because the attacker goal is now that he stole these funds, he wants to get away from the Phantom chain, which maybe can be frozen, can be censored. He wants to get away to Ethereum, which is, I guess, a bit more uh, decentralized. And what he does, he just swaps all the tokens back to Phantom and bridges it. First, he sent it to a lot of a lot of other EO accounts to obfuscate his steps. So imagine that he has his main attacker account where he got all the stolen money. Then he sold it to Rob Phantom and just sent a million phantoms every time, which is almost $1 million to different addresses. Now, this is another uh, very nice view of the exploit transaction and you can see how the balance and the token movement happened and how the tokens moved from one address to another. And here we can see the flash swap that the attacker took. Uh, interestingly enough, the attacker took a flash swap from both Uniswap V2 and V3. Here we can see the Uniswap V2 flash swap. You can see that he took $1 million uh, worth of boot token from the smart contract and then he paid back some boot tokens and wrap phantom. It's a liquidity pool of boot and wrap phantom and he utilizes the flash swap to get a big capital of boot tokens. You can see that eventually the pair got in profit of 3k which are the the swap fees or the flash swap fees. So after he took this $1 million, he had to pay 0.3% fee to the pair, which is approximately $3,000. I think it's 0.225 in a spooky swap, if I'm not wrong. Um, but yeah, so the pair got some fees. This is the total sum that he got. And this is the attacker profit. This is the EOA account of the attacker and he profited more than 9.3 almost 9.4 million dollars this is the protocol loss 7 million dollars plus 8000 plus 1.8 plus 26 and you can click here show more to see show all to see uh, more details but this is just a nice summary of how this attack took place and this was the bull market before the lending protocol you had the bull market where you can deposit boot tokens and borrow other tokens and right after the bull market is worth three thousand dollars it was 12 million dollars before it just drained this market completely now that we understand the attack timeline and how the attack took place let's talk about the vulnerability that allowed this attacker to implement this attack the next section the technical details is dedicated to the smart contract hacking students because this content requires some prerequisites and some knowledge in order to understand it and be able to grasp all the details now if you're serious about smart contract security auditing and hacking you should definitely check out the smart contract hacking course where you can learn all these fundamentals regarding smart contract security become a hacker and also get the full technical details of this attack and also we have a free trial so head over to the smartcontracthacking.com check the website check the syllabus see how much value you're getting in this course we have so many chapters and so many lectures about DeFi hacking flash loan attacks oracle manipulation re entry attacks and so on and if you're serious about security and hacking in web3 this is the best course for you so head over to the website get a free trial and try it out